quick in this, I am Susan Gray in England, I am the chair of the board at Burr and Living, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you all here today. I have, as you can see, a fine panel, a panel of Gary Morton from David Baker Tilly, and Ian Smith, our resources director, and Adam Thwaite, who is from our solicitors, Anthony Collins. And you'll have the opportunity to have a dialogue and ask questions of that panel shortly. But let me first welcome you all to this RAGM. I think that the sun might come out later, so um, you keep focused and uh, you know, thinking, no rain dance, but lots of sunshine thinking throughout the AGM so that by the time we go out, we can have a great day ahead. So welcome to you all. I hope you've enjoyed your refreshments and indeed enjoyed looking at our little video uh, and seeing and hearing, if you could, above the chatter, because I know you all like to get together and have a natter, and hearing a little bit about what our Derwent Living customers think of where they live. Now, I know that um, the Derwent Living team has gone to lots of effort today to ensure you have fun and an informative afternoon. And I do really hope you enjoy your day. It's um, jam-packed, a jam-packed afternoon. Um, and a little later, uh, I will speak about how we meet the challenges each day of providing our services to you. Uh, we will be putting a number of your questions uh, to a panel in our very own question time. And then after that, we we'll invite you to go through the yellow door here. Yes, it is a door, it's not just a wall. To go through the yellow door and to see all of the stalls that we've got and then later go on outside where we have a barbecue and a very special video booth which I'll tell you a little bit more later. And they tell me uh, for uh, the children present but the grown-ups too, we've got a giant scale electric. So let's look forward to that. Now first I have to do some formal business because this is the 2012 annual general meeting of Derwent Living. And so we do have the formal business and the agenda for that, if the technology is working, is on the screen behind me. Now firstly I have to see if there are any apologies for absence. I can inform you that those members of Derwent Housing Association who have let it be known that they cannot attend today will be recorded in the minutes as a true record. I also have to say that I have received nine proxy votes from members who could not attend today. So moving on, and secondly, this is about the minutes of the last meeting, that's the record of last year's annual general meeting. Some of you will recall last year's annual general meeting was in the court in Derby on June 16th. The minutes of that meeting were circulated to Derwent Housing Association members prior to today and no queries have been raised with me. If there are any minor amendments for spelling or grammar or typographical errors, um, I would appreciate it if those could be brought to our attention at the end of today's annual general meeting. If anybody has a comment on the content of the minutes, which they would like noting at this meeting, uh, can that point be raised now? Any comments on the contents of last year's minutes? I've got some shaking heads, so thank you for that. Um, I'm going to take it then um, that um, uh, those minutes uh, are approved as a true record and that um, there are no matters arising uh, that are not otherwise covered on today's agenda. Okay, so I'm accepting those minutes and all points will be covered that arise. I'm deeming those minutes to have been approved. And I'm going to move us on to the third point on our agenda, which is about the audited <coughs> accounts for the year ending December the 31st, 2011. Now, let me tell you that 
our accounts have been thoroughly analysed and approved by the board and by its resources and risk committee. And the directors <coughs> are recommending that these accounts are received as a true record of our activity. They have been scrutinised by our auditors, David Tilly, and Gary Morton of David Tilly is here, as is our resources director, Ian Smith, and both will take questions from the floor on the accounts in due course. Now I can tell you that the auditors have approved the accounts which show a surplus of 1.218 million after tax. This means, and it's quite important, that this means that we are a healthy organisation and we are classed as a going concern. And that means that we are set fair to continue with our core purpose to maintain the homes we have and to seek to develop more homes for those who need them. Now at this point I'm going to ask Gary Morton to come up to the lectern and to talk you through those accounts and then when I return I will ask if you have any questions for Gary and for Ian. Good evening, good morning, good morning brother. So, um, let me just start. I'm Gary Walson. I'm here representing uh, Baker Tilly, who are auditors to uh, Dirt for Living. Uh, my own role, I'm an audit specialist, um, and I head Baker Tilly's National Social Housing Team. I've got two roles with you uh, this morning. Uh, firstly, is just to give you an overview of the financial position of uh, the group. Um, and also, I thought I'd just touch on really what my own role is as uh, an auditor. I'm see you glossing over at this part. I'm going to keep it uh, fairly quick. I've only got five slides for you. Uh, but I want to talk you through really what an audit is for you and also what its impact is on uh, the audit itself. Uh, so I'm going to touch on my first slide. Independence is uh, obviously very important because what our role as auditors is, is we have to form an opinion on the financial statements. We need to make sure that they properly reflect the financial position of uh, the group and they also comply with all the relevant rules and regulations. And we need to do, be able to do that without any influence from anyone. So in terms of what does that mean, what do we do? Well, I have a team of people that visit the living uh, throughout the year. Uh, we look at counting controls and procedures. Uh, the living also engage a separate team of internal auditors, and together we both look to make sure that all the systems procedures are properly uh, fair and controlled, uh, and they get a good basis for actually recording uh, your accounts. We also make sure that your accounts reflect good practice, uh, best practice, and they fairly represent your financial position. It is a robust process, so Derwent and in particular your finance team uh, do go through, through quite a thorough uh, position to make sure that really your final financial position is properly stated. So if I turn you to the numbers, <coughs> And really, this is as complicated as, I get, as it gets, I assure you. Uh, turn over the top line is basically income. So the majority of that is income that derives from basically your uh, the revenue of the homes. And the good news there is that it's up. It's up by about £1.8 million. Pounds. Predominantly, probably two reasons. Uh, in autumn last year, uh, Durban Living uh, took over about 1,100 homes from another association and that's brought significant income and resources into the group. Um, also, we have a facilities management business, um, and that's also been extremely well during the year, uh, brought about another million pounds worth of income into the group. And traditionally, when income goes up, costs go up as well. And actually, you'll see here, they went down. Um, they've actually gone down by about 2.3 million. Two main reasons for that. Uh, 
Last year in 2010, certain assets were disposed of, and those assets took away certain liabilities and costs. But actually, the management team at Durban have also made strenuous strides that we have actually driving through the efficiencies and effectiveness, and that's come through in the form of low costs. So your operating surplus here has actually increased by a very credible four million pounds. You sold less property today during the year, and so the surplus on property sales has gone down by from 3.2 million to uh, just over 400,000 pounds. And what that means is that the overall surplus that you retained before tax is very similar to the last year, about 1.4 million pounds. On the next slide, thank you. Last, last slide numbers is the balance sheet. Uh, basically, what this records is recording your assets, which is basically what you owe, and it's recording your liabilities, um, creditors, which is basically what you owe to me. Fixed assets at the top, uh, that's in essence your housing properties. Uh, and you'll see that there's been a substantial increase in housing properties. Uh, it reflects around £77 million pounds worth of new homes coming into play during the year. There's also an additional £22 million pounds of spend during the year of, on property still in the course of, of construction. So that's a significant achievement. Uh, it's a sign of the increase in your housing stock and other properties. <coughs> but you do sell properties from time to time to, to uh, bring in some income. Um, you've got there around £47 million pounds worth of properties, it's mostly student debts that you're looking to actually uh, dispose of during the year, and the intention of your management team and board is then to actually reinvest those proceeds uh, into new developments. Halfway down the page there, you've got creditors and long-term creditors. Conversely, they're also showing quite an increase. And really, that, all that is is additional loans and other facilities that we've taken out during the year. In essence, to actually meet the, um, uh, the um, development of new properties. You'll see from that, Derwent Living is a substantial business, um, but the accounts do show that you're in a good financial position. So back to my audit opinion. And I'm pleased to say that it is a clean, unqualified audit opinion. So it does show that in my opinion, I'm content that the accounts do reflect what we call the true fair position of the group's financial activities. They do comply with the appropriate laws and regulations, and you do have some good, strong uh, financial systems in place. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. Can I ask, are there any questions of Barry, our auditor?
We very specifically enclosed bibliographical notes in the documentation for today so that you can see the high caliber of our current board members. They are here today and I am assured and I know they don't fight. So a little bit later on, uh, when we're gathered in the area where our stalls are, please do feel free to speak to board members. They'll be gathered in the central area, they'll be easy to spot. And do please ask them any questions that you have about the governance of this organisation. And I know they'll be very, very pleased to answer that. Now, in recruiting the board, we do use a skills matrix. And all the time we're looking at the competencies that we need for those board members, developing that and looking for people that meet that very specific skills mix and competency mix so that we can help with our succession planning in the future. But we do want customers to be at the heart of our decision-making process. And many customers are already involved in a number of ways in how we run this business. We have the scrutiny team. It's a strategic group and a, and a host of other forums and working groups. And this is absolutely invaluable to Derwent Living in shaping our services for you, our services for the future. So there are many <coughs> levels at which our tenants and residents can become involved. But we do also have a new process which we call the Board and Committee Residence Recruitment Process. And this is a specific shift by us to try to help you as our customers um, to become able to offer yourselves whenever we are recruiting to the board. And I know that uh, Mitch Allisbrook, who is well known to many of you, will be happy to talk later about anyone who is interested in more formally preparing and engaging themselves in that potential for board membership of the future. Point six on the agenda talks about the adoption of National Housing Federation 2011 model rules. It sounds very formal, I know. But it's all about us being modern and up to date with what a housing association should be doing. Derwent Living's current rules limit the number of residents who can be shareholders. And we are proposing here today to update Derwent Living's rules in line with the National Housing Federation's 2011 model. And a copy of those rules has been provided to members with details of the changes that we're proposing today. Can I ask then, and I'm looking to members, um, for um, approval of these model rules, and before I just ask you to raise your hands if you support those, um, this is subject to the approval of the housing corporate, the, well, what they're called now, the HCA, the housing corporation, as, as it was in the old days, the HCA, and um, FSA registration. So we do need that regulatory approval, uh, but first of all today, I do need to know whether members support our change into this model rule set. Um, do members approve? Can I see a show of hands? We seem to have that to the members approval. Thank you very much indeed. Certainly a um, uh, majority approval. Thanks. Um, if anybody did have any questions on the rules, um, Anne Adamthwaite is here from our solicitors, Anthony Collins. And she would be able to answer some specific questions. Um, are there any questions on the model rules? Okay, well, thank you very much, Anne, for attending. It's very important that you have access to uh, good advice, and that's why our company uh, secretary solicitors are present um, to offer that to you. So if there are no questions on the model rules, which have now been adopted, I'm going to move on to a review of the year. Don't worry, because the bouncy castle is blown up and ready, so I'll move through this as fast as I can. But I do want to take this opportunity to 
talk about the successes that we've achieved, but also I need to face up to some of the challenges that we've faced. Let me give you some headline figures because I think these are astonishing. And some of the work that we have done uh, throughout the past year and continue to do in 2012. At this mid-year point in 2012, we have provided over 200 new homes for customers. And we've added um, a further 300 homes that we've purchased from other organisations and added those to our portfolio. Can you believe that we have resolved 14,254 customer inquiries at the first point of contact? We've handled nearly 45,000 calls via our customer contact centre. We completed 1,000 397 emergency repairs and 1,485 urgent repairs. These are big numbers, aren't they? We completed 73 antisocial behaviour cases and we served over 14,000 visitors per month via our new website. And would you believe we kept over 1,600 followers and fans up to date through Twitter and Facebook. And if you're not Twittering yet, if you're not Facebooking yet, there's plenty of opportunity uh, on our stores later to get up to speed with the modern technology. So those statistics are about what we've done so far this year. But what about the future? We do live in a time when unemployment is high, and indeed, I think we expect it to rise even further. This is a time when welfare benefits are being squeezed and will be squeezed even further. And it's a time when prices for basic things are at an all-time high. Today I want to say that Derwent Living aims to understand those problems. And it wants to understand our customers who are facing problems, facing increased financial pressures, just as we do. Increased financial pressures, operating as an affordable housing provider in a context and in a time when we do not have any government subsidy. And this is very important for us and for you because in the past we had financial support from government agencies and that is no longer available to us. We know that rents rose recently, that this was necessary to maintain service levels, to improve your homes and to build new ones. We had little choice but to raise rents to the maximum levels because that is set by government. But we do expect that rises in the future will be much lower than this year. Frontline services are changing and as a result of new government policy. So we are refocusing in areas where customers need our support. So because those changes to benefit payments are impacting across housing, it is thanks to profit from our expanding commercial efforts that Derwent Living is able to continue to develop and improve its affordable housing services. We will be contacting residents who will be most affected by the changes in those welfare benefits and we will be seeing how we can help the most. Because public subsidy is that thing of the past, we do call upon our executive team and upon our advisors and upon our board to be more innovative about the funding solutions they can bring to us. At the AGM last year, you may recall, um, I announced that we were the first housing association in the country to draw in pension funds rather than traditional bank loans to fund affordable housing. And we successfully used this model 
to bring in actually 1,100 homes from another housing provider. So a great use of that innovative funding stream to bring more homes into our organisation. We also use our own funds to develop new housing. And because of that distinct way that Derwent Living is structured, it is profit from our commercial activity that enables us to build that 200 homes a year. And we plan to do that for the next three years without any help from the government. I think that's a great accolade to the work that our executive team and our board is doing to bring new homes in without government subsidy. But at the same time as creating new homes for customers, this um, activity within Dermot Living allows us to support the regional economy. Because would you believe there is an effect that for every pound that we spend on construction building new homes, that generates three pound locally. So it has a great impact, not just on those of you who want homes, uh, but on the economy generally around us. Now, innovation comes in many forms, and Derwent Living is at the forefront of developing new homes that are using the latest sustainable technologies. You might have seen on the slides earlier that I was pictured with a famous film director just a few months ago when I was lucky enough to open a new scheme for Derwent Living quite nearby. Now that scheme is our most eco-friendly to date. It's a development where our residents are enjoying not just beautifully built homes, but sustainable homes, and capitalising on lots of new, new things that help them to have lower energy bills. I think that's important for our future that we're all the time looking at the ways that we build and maintain our homes to make living there cheaper for all of you. So, when things are tight, it is important that Derwent Living does the most that it can with as little money as possible. Doing more for less is what we're all there to do. We are constantly striving to maintain and improve the services we provide while saving money and working more efficiently. And I'd like to tell you that between 2011 and 2012, Derwent Living made three million pounds of efficiency savings. I think that is incredible, an amazing achievement and a great accolade to our executive team and uh, our, our staff who helped make that possible. But of course, you all know that it's worthless our making savings if our service deteriorates. And I'm pleased to say that that's not the case. That we are making strong progress against our customer commitments. These commitments allow us to see what service levels are achieved in different operating areas and indeed allow us to do something about it if those service levels are not at the standard that we want them to be. The figures show that over the last few months, satisfaction with our services has been improving. We are constantly achieving our targets in 8 out of 10 of the commitments that we made to you. And we are working to make sure that we outperform our targets in all of them. We still have work to do, there's always more to do, and we recognise that changing repairs contractors has led to a poorer service for some residents. You know why we've had to change our repairs contractors, because last year we were forced to make this decision because of um, the sad demise of an organisation we had been using called Conort. And for the last year that we've been working on an interim basis with an organisation called Lovell, uh, but we did go out to an open tender process, which I know many of you have helped and supported us with. So I'm very <coughs> pleased to say that we do have new long-term repairs and maintenance partners, and they're here today. So today, please welcome our uh, guests and uh, our new contractors, 
the Liberty Group and Winchires, who are appointed to deliver the day-to-day -day repairs and gas servicing. You'll find them on stalls in the room in due course. And I can see our uh, Liberty colleagues. Uh, could you just wave? Thank you. And our Winchire colleagues? Thank you very much indeed. And welcome aboard. And um, these are the people that we want you to run a very good service for. Thank you very much. I'm sure they'll have lots to ask you and to say in due course. Now, we're going to be working with them over the next few months to make sure that the transition from the old to their service is as smooth as possible. So please work with us as we make that transition. But it's not all about fixing problems. We are committed to planned improvements. It's a planned improvement programme which will ensure that we carry out repairs, maintenance and improvements to 150 properties in the next three years. I can say to you that all of Derwent's living properties do now conform to the decent home standard. And indeed, many do exceed this standard and meet what we call Derwent Homes Plus standard. Having told you all of those statistics and all of that means, I kind of believe that left the best till last really. And that's, that's about all of you. Your involvement is much appreciated by us, and we can't deliver the business we need to deliver for you if it wasn't for your involvement. Derwent Living does remain committed to ensuring that customers are at the heart of decision making. And I do thank you for attending today and for all that you've done throughout the year and the years with us. The scrutiny team who I know will be keen to speak to you next door once the AGM concludes, have been invaluable as we work within a new regulatory framework, a framework that's called co-regulation. Their commitment and dedication has led to a number of positive changes across the business. They've been able to examine areas such as repairs, such as the role of housing officers, and the services that we do provide to homeowners. They do this from your point of view, from a resident's point of view, making recommendations for improvement to the board. And I can say that many of those recommendations for improvement have been implemented, and I think they improve the service greatly. You as our tenants and residents, as our customers, have also helped us to go through that process of choosing our new repairs and gas contractors. And I know that that continues to be the most important thing for all of you, that repairs are carried out when we say they will be, and on time, efficiently and effectively. You have told us what you think about customer commitments and what you would like to see from them in the future. You've talked to us about uh, your views on value for money and you've told us what you think about financial transparency. But involvement work by you isn't just limited to meetings. It has spread in that modern way online. And all of you have been thinking about outside the box to help us realise our online potential. You've helped us to develop a new customer-focused website. And you've helped us develop, now we're going to get the technology here, a smartphone app. And I know that that smartphone app is out there for you to see. You know that app comes from application, don't we? That's what we call it. So, smartphone app to access the services from Dermot Living, and it's all here for you to see today. Now, I know that later in the year, um, those of you who would like to play with technology will be able to log in to a new resident portal where you will be able to access all of the Derwent Living services 24 hours a day. This technology never sleeps, and neither do we. Now, I'm pleased to say that with your help, our online presence is growing, and it is making us 
one of the UK's most engaging housing associations. And that's what resident involvement is all about. It's about engagement and it continues to be central to what we do and we are determined to meet the highest standards in delivering services to customers. So I will look forward to the next few years with renewed enthusiasm and determination that we can still make a big difference to the lives of all of you, to the lives of all those who are involved with Derwent Living, and indeed to the lives of all of those who have not yet found us, but are hopefully with our new homes coming on stream, you know, that increasing Derwent Living family, we are here to serve all of you with your help, which you've given us, and I thank you for.